Hello and welcome back to another color class. I'm Sarah. I'm Lucinda. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the six palette system, but looking at the best version of a color for you and your dominant characteristic. So for example, we were going to be taking a look at red and we are going to be seeing the best color red for each of the six dominant characteristics. All right, so let's go ahead and get into a quick review of the six dominant characteristics for anyone who is new or just needs a quick refresher. As we're looking to determine whether somebody, which of the six dominant characteristics is their dominant characteristic, we have to determine all of their characteristics. Are they light? Are they deep? Pick one. Are they warm? Are they cool? Pick one. Are they soft or are they clear? Pick one. Now, you will end up, at this point, you'll have three characteristics that kind of represent this person that you're looking at or yourself. Um, and then you have to decide which one is dominant. Now, each one of these dominant characteristics then has a, an attitude that they put onto a particular color. They change a color um, to suit each of the characteristics. Now, what does that mean? It's really hard to describe. Let's look at red, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, starting with the clear color, I, and I start there because remember, I've taught you guys that clear is the color of something that comes right out of the tube. You know, if you're painting, clear would be the color without anything added to it, right? But when you want to make a clear color suitable for a light color, you add white. When you want to make that same clear color suitable for somebody who's deep, you add black. And this doesn't happen in every instance, but this is, this is kind of the majority mm -hmm. of the time. When you want to make something, the clear color suitable for someone who is just predominantly warm all over, you add gold. When you want to make some something cooler, you know, make this red cooler for somebody who's cool, you add blue. And then if you want to soften it, you add gray. So this first chart shows you how when you're starting with that clear red color, what happens to the clear red color as it is embraced by each of these dominant characteristics. So I think a really great example is using us as figuring out what is our dominant characteristic because both of us kind of have some competing factors but we fall into different groups so for instance you yeah i i would be light cool and soft because mm -hmm. you know i'm definitely not deep i'm definitely definitely no longer warm and i'm not clear i have no no heavy duty contrast anywhere mm -hmm. on me so i'm soft light cool and soft well maybe today your glasses but <laughs> yeah. all right and then if for me my deeper hair throws me and shifts me a little bit deeper and then my hair of course shifts me a little bit warm even though i have a predominantly cool to neutral skin tone just w embracing my warmer colors is going to shift what's it dominant your hair color that red mm -hmm. of your hair is right that's definitely dominant of the if you're looking at skin tone, eye color, and uh, hair color mm -hmm. on Sarah, my what, hair color is what, what strikes you. Me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you've mentioned deep and warm, mm -hmm. and then soft and clear. Of course, there's nothing very high contrast on me, either. Very mm, just ishy. We always use the ishy mm -hmm. word. Reddish hair. My skin tone is neutral-ish. My eyebrows. <laughs> Don't, don't even get me started about how <laughs> ishy they are. And my overall appearance is just ishy. So I fall into the soft category. Exactly. Now, how can, and I fall into the soft category because I'm not all that light. I'm not crazy light. I'm definitely not crazy cool. And, you know, I, I am soft. So of the three, I too am soft. So mm -hmm. we are both soft. So what that means is, when we're looking at a red color, we need to add a little bit of gray to our red to make it our own, mm -hmm. to make it not swamp us. Because if we were wearing a bright, clear color, that color would take over and grab all the attention versus wearing something that matches our low contrast selves. Yeah. So on me, um, if I were wearing a 
vibrant red, you would think I look pale, sickly, uh, grayed out, mm -hmm. not all that healthy. So what I do to compete with that red, I pull it back and I take back some of the saturation. I desaturate mm -hmm. it to a point where I'm the star, where I look healthy. Same with Sarah. We desaturate it because Sarah has a very uh, porcelain, coolish skin tone. And that red on her would make her look also sickly. Uh, very and, pale. And it would clash with her hair. Right. So what we do is we pull it back just a little bit. We desaturate it so that none of that clashing is going on. And it's very flattering for us both. Mm -hmm. Now, we just talked about red, but let's take a look at our next color that we have. Blue. Mm. One of my favorite colors. <laughs> so uh, the best way to look at these charts when I give them to you is um, you look at the clear color because that's the color without any nuance. Mm -hmm. And clear is bottom right. Correct. And so clear, you see, clear is clear. But if you want clear to be something that's really flattering to you, if you're light, what do we do? We add a little white to that clear color. If we want it to be flattering to you, if you're a deep, we add black. And again, this is directionally correct. There are a couple that are kind of off, but, and, and I'll tell you the reason they're off. I don't know if any of you paint, I paint. And so you know that you, there's lamp black, there's Mars black, there are multiple blacks out there in the world. And when you add color to them, they come up as different colors. You know, lamp black will come up a different color if you add white to it than Mars black. Or So the bottom line is when I say add black, I'm talking color theory, maybe, um, not necessarily pure paint or pure dye. That's probably more than you needed to know, but <laughs> bear with me. Anyway, so deep is uh, your clear color plus black. Then to, to get you into the warm dominant characteristic, we add, take the clear color and we add gold. And for the clear blue, we can't really add blue. Normally when you're make, cooling down a color, again, if you paint or uh, whatever, uh, you add blue to make a color cooler. That doesn't really work for blue because you're already blue. Um, you can make it bluer by moving a little bit toward violet. And why does that work? Because it takes you further away from yellow if, if you're on a color wheel. So in this particular instance, this color, which is your cool blue, is clear plus violet. Then to get you into a soft blue, we take that clear blue and we add gray. This is your, this is the way we've nuanced that one clear blue to encompass all six of the dominant characteristics. And then lastly, we have purple. So let's take a look. Yes. Purple is a universal color. So, and I tell you this because it sits on the color wheel between red and blue. And so in theory, all of these dominant characteristics can get away with wearing purple. This just makes it a little more nuanced here. So in order to lighten up your, that clear purple, again, we add white. Quiz time. <laughs> <laughs> in order to deepen the purple, we add black. In order to make uh, the purple warmer, and this is, this is a great thing to look at, folks, because we've gotten a lot of questions about from people asking, what is, is violet warmer or cooler than regular purple? It's warmer. Uh, so if you take that clear purple, you add a little gold, it actually looks more like violet, yes? Mm -hmm. And then uh, to get a cooler purple, we move it a little bit toward blue, we add a little blue, and then to get it more toward soft, we add gray. Now, again, this is, this is nuanced because you can add a little bit of gray or you can add a lot of gray and end up with something that just looks like a purplish gray or a grayish purple. Um, so there's a whole continuum that we're talking about along here 
there's a light purple, there's an even lighter purple, there's an even lighter purple, there's a warmer purple, even warmer. So again, there's a whole spectrum. What I did here though, was to just show you one example as so as not to just completely overwhelm you for this exercise. What I want you to understand is just like you have characteristics, colors have characteristics. And this is how we fill them out, how we explore them. So these are the nuances that help you understand each of the characteristics to really get the color that you're looking for to build your palette from. One thing to remember is the way that we are teaching you color analysis and, and color theory and all of this is we want to give you enough visual information so that if you go into a store and you look at a color purple, you can say, oh, that's a, that's a beautiful muted purple. Hmm, but I'm clear, may not be for me. Mm -hmm. Or you can look at a red and say, oh, that's warm red. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, you know, I'm a spring, I, I, I can pull that off. Mm -hmm. Or, so the bottom line is, at the end of all this, just so you understand why we're putting you through this, is because we want enough pictures implanted in your brain <laughs> that you will understand the moment you see a color in a store mm -hmm. in a, a you know a paint cup paint chip anything you know exactly what characteristics that color mm -hmm. has and of course i have to throw this in these are available on our facebook page and you can find the link in the description down below but these really these charts just help you visualize i for me Study this is it, right yeah. this is what i when I was learning color analysis, when and even teaching it to this day, these are the graphs that really cemented it inside my mind. So I was able to do this on the go, which I really love. So I hope these are helpful for you and use them to your advantage because come on over to Facebook and you can grab them. And we, I mean, we still have these on our phones. Okay. I, we use them all the time. So they're great to have. And thank you again. If you do enjoy having this type of information, we love giving it to you, but subscribing to our YouTube channel yes. really helps us. So if you want to pay back the favor, subscribe, like, comment, and share. We are trying to build this color analysis YouTube channel, and we want to have you along for the ride. So thank you again for being here. I'm Sarah. I'm Lucinda. This has been another color class, and we'll see you in our next video.